good Josh your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So just finished watching WrestleMania 37 night one. Um, I must say I was kind of like, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was, it was meh, I guess you could say. Like there were some good aspects about uh, tonight, but there was a lot of aspects of what was going on in matches that I really did not care for. So it was just kind of meh for me. I wouldn't say it was bad, but it was it was just there were some things that went on during the show that it you know I, I think it was just like it made it somewhat watchable only because and this goes into the big part of the fans finally being back in attendance which made it a lot more enjoyable I, if the fans weren't there i think i would have been bored even more during this uh the first night but um i'm gonna go down through my notes um my phone is blowing up right now <laughs> um i'm gonna go through my notes and try to kind of you know talk about everything that i did mention to watch uh, i gotta make a disclaimer here there were certain matches i just did not watch I'm not gonna lie to you i didn't watch it like i i literally was playing call of duty for uh, some of these matches which goes into what i was talking about where it was kind of meh for me but we're gonna talk about the matches that i did care to watch and were entertained by but before we even get into any matches man let's talk about the fact that the weather delay it caused them to have to like, you know, send people out of the stadium due to the weather conditions. So they had to kind of delay the show. But I do like the fact that they had some impromptu promo segments that I thought were fantastic. And I, I'm, I'm really wishing WWE do more of these type of promo segments, these impromptu ones, because you can tell they weren't scripted. Um, I was surprised the WWE Championship match was going on first, but then it made sense because they wanted Sasha and Bianca to main event. Um, the impromptu uh, promo in the back uh, with uh, Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley was great. I like Drew's intensity. He was like, yo, bro, I don't give a damn about this weather. I'm going to whoop your ass because I heard you talking trash over here. So I'm going to whoop your ass. I can whoop your ass right now. I love that. And he was like, so amped up and emotional because you know they they were you know standing for the uh, the national anthem and they could see the crowd and they could hear the crowd just hype to be there like you know people were very emotional finally see fans over a year it's been literally over a year since fans have been in attendance so people were really emotional about this um then i want to say um there were some moments in this show that was mega cringe, which brought down my overall enjoyment, like my overall rating for this show. That's why it's still in the meh category for night one. Um, when Michael Cole said, I guess you can call this WrestleRania, I literally wanted to just explode full of cringe. I just went, I just, I was like, all right, bro, if this is how night one is going to be, this is not going to be good. This is, I don't even know how many matches are on the card for night one. I'm, I'm not liking this. That, that cringe was awful. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys cringe as well. When he said WrestleMania, I, I literally almost burst into flames. Um, the promo with Seth Rollins and this new announcer, he just started. Uh, I think his name was Kevin, but he kept calling him Mike. His promo, Seth Rollins' promo was actually entertaining and funny. Like, it gave me a face-type vibe. It was very, very funny, and I enjoyed that promo. It was, like I said, impromptu. In the same way with Kevin Owens' promo, he was like, yo, give me the mic. And it was just impromptu. You can tell these weren't scripted. These were, you know, to buy time for them to let the fans come back into the stadium. And I wish they do more segments like this because it shows the wrestlers' actual charisma. It was fantastic. I like that. Then some more cringe came to the stage as Titus O'Neil and Hulk Hogan. They are the co like the the guest host for WrestleMania this year. Seems like Hulk Hogan's like the guest host for every WrestleMania. It was so much cringe. I'm just like get get them off the stage. Titus is cool, but get Hulk Hogan off the stage. Even then, it's just I just want to get let's get to the let's get to the matches, man. Let's get to the what we're here for WrestleMania. So. 
Drew entrance gave me goosebumps for one. The pyro, seeing the fireworks again. You know, I mean, we've seen the fireworks, but seeing it with fans is always great. Seeing it in the open stadium gave me goosebumps. He was amped up. He was getting the crowd amped up. You can tell people were happy to finally be there. He was happy to have people there. I'm like, okay, I'm getting, I'm all right. Things are looking a little bit on the up and up. I'm looking forward to WrestleMania. You know, I'm looking forward for this to start up. Uh, decent starts in the match. They was kind of filling each other out. They're surprisingly, even though Bobby Bobby Lashley was a heel, you know, saying in this match, well, he is a heel. Uh, he was getting a lot of love and support, and I, I think because people really don't have a problem with Bobby Lashley as champion, and I don't. So the outcome for me in this match, I didn't. It didn't really matter to me if Bobby retained it, which he ultimately did. Then cool, but uh, if Drew was to win it. I didn't trip off of that either. I think, you know, giving Bobby a, a legitimate title run would be nice. You know, it'll be something different. And he, he's, you believe him as a champion, bro. You actually do. Um, and plus, he has the MVP as his mouthpiece. So that's always good, too. Uh, let's see. Um, to hear the crowd chanting, you know what I'm saying? Cheering was just a, a good feel. Um, Lashley starts to dominate Drew for like the beginning part of the match. Then uh, Drew starts to mount a uh, uh, mount a comeback. I'm over here messing up the microphone. Mounts a comeback. Um, the one arm slam by Lashley. It looks like a one arm slam. You know, saying so the way he positions himself. I think he has his hand like on on his lower back, but it's still a high impact move. It looks very impressive. Uh, the Drew kip up and. The Drew Kip up, like, you know what I'm saying, right after that and tells Bobby Lashley to bring it, bitch. I thought that was intense. I thought that was cool, you know, a little edgy, you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm all for that. Uh, let's see. I like the fact that they really built up Bobby Lashley as a formidable opponent, and he hit three Future Shock DDTs on Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre did. For a, a, a two count, you know what I'm saying? Really selling it. Bobby Lashley is a formidable opponent. You're going to have to really dig deep to take him out. Um, Drew flying over the top rope to take out Bobby and MVP was, it gave me the uh, old school Undertaker, him doing the tope over the top rope. So it, it's always crazy when you see someone that tall being able to make that work, you know, land that effectively. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Drew countered the spine buster into a Kimura lock. He was basically trying to work on the arm to neutralize Bobby Lashley doing a hurt locker. So, you know what I'm saying? He has to use one of his arms. So he's trying to neutralize one of it to ultimately make that submission uh, kind of useless. Um, now, here's the thing. Towards the end of the match, I don't know why. Drew would have got distracted by MVP. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I would have been focused in on just hitting the, the Claymore. But some Miz did something like he, not Miz. MVP said something that distracted Drew for one second, and that distracting distraction cost Drew the match. Even though Drew didn't tap out to the Hurt Locker, he passed out, which still makes Drew look strong. And you know, ultimately, Bobby he still technically won clean because. MVP didn't get involved in the match. He said something and drew goofy ass, you know, got distracted by it. Hold on. Yo, I'm recording my video right now. Let me call you back. Uh, I'm recording my video right now. I'm going to call you back. But, hey, tell them, hey, uh, you know what I'm saying, check out the video for tomorrow. I'm doing this right live right now. Wow, I want y'all to hear this. Talking about put me on speaker. Yeah, I'm putting you on hey. speaker. Hey, what's good? <laughs> uh, I love y'all, man. Ross is rich. If you look at that room, bro, he ain't showing you all the stuff that he really got in there. Look at that lighting. The and wow. He wear the same clothes twice. Wow. Again, he does not wear the same clothes twice. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting charged just to be on the phone with him right now. Wow. Well, y'all heard it here first, man. This is this is what I deal with, y'all, off camera, man. This is what I deal with. But rich nigga, rich nigga, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hit y'all back, bro. <laughs> ah, just hey man. Quick detour. I know this is a little detour, but on the end of clutch page, we'll be premiering a video where we did a sit down talk with Brandon. Brandon was actually on the phone, Trill Billy Brand. For those who may not remember him, Trill Billy Brand. Um, 
will be making a, a guest appearance on the channel tomorrow. We're dropping a video at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We had to drop it right before WrestleMania Night 2 because we know people want to watch WrestleMania. I got to watch WrestleMania Night 2 from the start. So that's what's happening. Just a little slight detour. So, you know, make sure y'all check that out for all the Clutch Squad members that subscribe to my page. But back to what I was talking about. Shout out to Dub. Shout out to True Billy. Um, Drew didn't tap out. It's good. Makes him look strong. It still doesn't make sense why he would get distracted by MVP. But either way, Bobby Lashley retains his championship. Looking forward to seeing what he does with this title run. Um, let's see. This is where things start to like. Like I, I, I give this this uh, night one the meh rating. Like the eh, it was okay rating. Not really the best. Not the worst. And it starts right here with the. Uh, the, uh, I want to say the tag team turmoil match, the women's tag team turmoil match. I did not care. I put in my notes. I'm not going to lie. I don't care about this tag team turmoil match. I hopped on call of duty during this match. That's exactly what I did. But, uh, I want to say Natalia and Tamina Suka Snuka won. So they'll be facing, uh, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax tomorrow for the women's tag team championship. Yay. I'm going to probably watch Call of Duty on that match, too. Yay. Anywho, next match, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. Actually, was looking forward to this. Interesting match. Did not know Cesaro has never had a one-on-one -on -one competition at WrestleMania. You know what I'm saying? I'm, he's never had a one-on-one -on -one competition at WrestleMania. So I thought that was an interesting stat to know. I like the ad that uh, Seth Rollins, like an ad campaign that Seth Rollins had going on for uh, Cesaro on SmackDown, basically saying, yo... You know what I'm saying? This guy's been been in the uh, in uh in WWE for ten years, hasn't won uh he hasn't won the Universal Championship, the WWE championship. This is the guy y'all wanna look up to. You should look up to me, Seth Rollins. I am the future of this business type ad campaign. I thought that was pretty funny. Um this, uh, I just mentioned that this is the first single match at WrestleMania. Like I said, I didn't know that. The corkscrew springboard to Rollins was beautiful. It's always beautiful when he hits his move. It's so, it's it's like, it's it looks good, but it looks also devastating. And, and that's what makes it pretty cool. I love how Rollins super, uh, his uh, superplex into the Falcon Arrow. I really wish that would be like one of his finishing moves. When he hits the superplex, then straight into the Falcon Arrow. I think that's a move that should be able to put away opponents. It never does. I think it should, though. Um, uh, let's see. Cesaro was working Seth with the uppercuts in the corner. I mean, he was just hitting him with uppercuts for like a good 15 to 20 seconds. Just boom, 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 boom. It looks very brutal. Nice little spot. Um, he was able to, he was in the match. He was trying to get uh, Seth into the Cesaro swing. He finally was able to do it. And uh, he, I think this was one of the the first times he hit him in the swing. He got like eight rotations in, and then uh, he was um, Seth Rollins was able to you know kind of get out of that you know because Cesaro got a little bit tired. Um, I want to say, uh, what's what's the next part? Now this was pretty cool. This was cool. I don't think I've ever seen this by Rollins. I haven't been watching too much of Rollins lately. But this corkscrew splash by Seth Rollins to Cesaro was beautiful. And it looked effective. I think he did definitely start. It's like a face type maneuver. Like Seth Rollins has a lot of moves that you would think a face would definitely use. High flying moves. I associate them with faces. And just, you know, they look they look dope. They're, they look impactful. And the crowd definitely gonna pop for high flying moves like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, they were putting on a very good match. You know, a lot, a decent amount of false finishes, not too many, but they were putting on a pretty good match. Um, let's see, Cesaro uh caught Rollins mid stomp. I thought this was a nice transition. Rollins is going for the the curb stomp. He uh after he hit the pedigree. On Cesaro and Cesaro kicked out. Rollins is going for the curb stomp. And in mid, like, he's about to hit it in the air. Cesaro pops up in one motion, hits him with a mean as uppercut, then puts him on his shoulders and start doing like this airplane move with no hands. I thought that was pretty impressive. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought that was very, very impressive. 
And then he kind of just slung him off his shoulders. And um, ultimately, uh, Cesaro, I believe he is the neutralizer. I'm not even sure. I think he does at this point. But he gets the win. He, he ends up getting the win, and which he needed. It's a nice rub for Cesaro. Cesaro is one of these guys in WWE that we all know, the fans know. He deserves a, a legit run. But WWE... They just, you know, he's not really good on the mic, so they're not really going to give him that legit run that he deserved. But he did have a nice moment here, a nice WrestleMania moment that I believe he deserved. All right, New Day versus AJ and uh, what's his name? Almost? Almost? It's almost, right? I think that's how you pronounce it. Dude is 7'3", ridiculously tall, would not want to be fighting him in any type of situation. Um... Kofi and AJ starting great off in the ring, doing some nice uh, switches, reversals, you know, mat wrestling. I like that. Uh, some more cringe. It's like, it's just like WWE can't stay away from the cringe. Kofi Kingston twerking mid-match. Why? This was a former WWE champion and he's twerking, bro. Why are we doing this in 2021? Cringe, bro. Cringe. I, I wanted them to lose a match just off of that alone. I'm sorry. It's... It's not funny, man. It's cringe. Anywho, Xavier talking trash, and it was funny because they were kind of more like heels in the way they were maneuvering. They were cutting off the ring so AJ couldn't tag in almost. Oh, I'm, I feel like I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Whatevs. But anywho, they, they couldn't, they wouldn't let him get to the other side of the ring. So Xavier is literally over here saying, you are not a tag team wrestler. See what we're doing right now? We're cutting you off from the ring, the other side of the ring. You're not tagging him in. I thought that was funny, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. And what's crazy is the crowd really wanted almost to get in, in the match. They really wanted to see what he could do because do 7-3. So, um... Majority of the match, they was doing a good job of keeping AJ on their side of the ring uh, from tagging almost. And then the crowd starts cheering almost once he finally gets tagged in. He's a heel. Remember, he's aligned with AJ. He's a heel. But they wanted to see. And dude is imposing when it comes to Xavier and Kofi. It's not even. It's ridiculous. Like, the fact that almost was like baiting Kofi like kick me Kofi's kicking him and almost was like yo you kick like a little bitch I'm like bro this is I look have the championships bro I'm good I'm going home they don't pay me enough to deal with this you know what I'm saying he could have had the belts the, the belts the tag team belts look like trash anyway to me they they have they just they don't they look like toy belts to me that's my personal opinion um I like Almost standing by the ropes, and AJ Styles hitting a phenomenal forearm to, I want to say, Xavier off his shoulders. I thought that was a pretty cool spot. And then, ultimately, Kofi Kingston getting slammed into oblivion by almost one, two, three. And you have your new tag team champs, AJ Styles, and almost all the Raw tag team champs. Cool. Not bad. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I figured that. It'll be interesting to see who they have here with them because who's taking those titles off AJ and almost. I still feel like I'm saying his name wrong. Let me know if I am. I don't, I don't know, bro. All right. This is another match I do not care, did not care for. Uh, The Shane versus Braun match. Did not care. I proceeded to play Call of Duty again. Um. I literally was not watching this match. They're building this match up for Braun to be the super baby face. This is for everyone that's ever been called a bully and, and, and stupid. I like the message, but Braun's not over, so I don't really care. Either way, don't care about this goddamn match, this cage match. Um, of course, Braun gets attacked before getting into the cage. Uh, who would have thought? He gets attacked by Elias and some other guy. Who would have thought? All right, but anywho, so that happened, right? Cool, bomb, bam, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think the one cool segment was, you know, uh, Shane being on the it, on the outside of the cage about to win. Braun grabbing his hand through the cage and then ripping the side of the cage so he can bring back uh, Shane and Man back into the cage. I thought that was a pretty cool spot. And then ultimately, um, of course, you know, it's WrestleMania. Shane's going to jump off of something or get thrown off of something. So he gets thrown off the top of the cage. Steel Cage by Braun Strowman. It was cool, I guess. 
it, it's, I've seen it so many times. I did not care. And I knew the match was over. One, two, three. Boom. Yay. Braun Strowman. Woo. Yay. I wonder if he's going to go for Bobby Lashley for the uh, WWE Championship title. I wonder if he's going to be the next person up. I would not be surprised. But I did not care for this match. I did not care for this outcome. We knew Braun was going to win. On to the next match. Um, I think the next segment was the NW, uh, not NWO, but NWO was in it, but the Hall of Fame segment. Bailey's going around. I don't know what's going on with her gimmick. I was just, she was at commentary at the commentary booth. I'm just like, what's going on? I, I you know, I, whatevs. Cool, but it was cool seeing the NWO being uh, inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame, uh, class of 2021. It made sense. NWO, a legendary wrestling group, not just you know saying WCW, legendary wrestling group. Um, this was honestly what revitalized Hulk Hogan's career. Him joining the NW, like being in the NWO, being the forerunner of that, and cre- doing that Hollywood Hogan heel persona that really changed his career because if you know hogan from wwe he was always the good guy he always you know saying the the real american hero and then he he went heel and it was cool the nwo was cool back then so i thought that was i thought that was you know nice for them to be on it obviously showing of course spray painting the nwo on the wcw uh championship at the time it's a legendary moment bro legendary moment all right, so here's a match I really, honestly, truly was ready to just say, you know what, uh, screw this. I'm about to continue to keep playing Call of Duty because at this point, I've only watched like, a handful of matches that I gave a damn about. So this pay-per-view was more or less still meh for me. It wasn't bad. It was just stuff I didn't care about. So um, I want to say the whole bunch of bunnies hopping to the ring, I was like, oh, this must be related to Bad Bunny. And then hearing The Miz and John Morrison rap, cringe, just cringe and awful. There was a lot of cringe on night one. I hope this is not like that on night two, which I doubt it. But this is so much cringe, bro. I literally just went back to the game, man. Like, what? Let me go kill some noobs on Call of Duty. This ain't it. This is not cool. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to the match, but I started to. As Bad Bunny was really the one starting off the match, he actually was doing pretty well. Like, I, I want, I'm not going to lie to you. For someone that's not a wrestler, he was way better than Snoop Dogg in AEW. I saw that top rope dive. What the hell was that? Like, he was really, really good. I'm not going to lie to you. He was doing well, and the crowd was actually behind him. Usually, the crowd just be kind of silent during these type of matches. But, no, he was really good doing top rope dives, doing doing her karanas. I believe he did a sunset flip outside of the ring. I could be wrong. I think it was like a sunset flip outside of the ring. Comment down below let me know uh, if that's the actual name of the move. He did it to, uh, I want to say it was... Uh, Maybe John Morrison. I'm not sure. I believe it was John Morrison. I think it was. I think so. Either way, I like the fact that everyone was shocked. The crowd was shocked. Damian Priest was shocked. The Miz was shocked. I'm, like he literally, the, he effectively hit the move beautifully on the on, on the outside mat. Dude was looking really good. More than I expected. Crowd was behind him. Um. Him and uh, Damian Priest, uh, Bad Bunny, were hitting synchronized moves together. I was like, bro, whoever trained him, they did a great job because he didn't look like he was a fish out of water. He looked pretty well for someone that does not even wrestle. He's not even no athlete. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was pretty amazing. Ultimately, of course, Bad Bunny, Damian Priest wins. I also have to mention that Bad Bunny's entrance was damn near one of the best entrances of the night. Dude came in on this huge-ass semi-truck on the top. Thought that was pretty cool. But, yeah, Bad Bunny did his thing, man. Crowd was cheering for him. Definitely got a nice little reaction from them. And, hey, bro, was not expecting that, but Bad Bunny, he did his thing. Shout out to you, bro. And that is amazing to be a longtime fan and to come out there and do that for your very first time. I'm sure... 
people in the back were definitely giving him pats on the back because it's not easy to do that, bro. People think you can just waltz in and be a wrestler. No, it takes years and time and dedication to do that. So for him to be able to learn what he learned in a short amount of time, amazing. Shout out to him, bro. So the main event, the match that boys have been waiting for, the one that, you know what I'm saying, People were looking forward to Sasha versus Bianca Belair. Uh, Bianca was very emotional at the beginning of the match. You know, crowds, you know, standing, applauding because this is the main event. You know what I'm saying? They're about to showcase what they what they can do. I don't. I think Michael Cole announced there's, uh, I think this is the first time in WWE history, two uh, African-American women, black women, main eventing a WrestleMania. That's never been done before, so... Hey, I'm all for that, man. I think that's amazing. Breaking down boundaries. Um, Sasha's outfit was mm, delicioso. She was looking good in that outfit, bro. Man, not even gonna lie to you. I know she's a married woman, so but she was looking good in that outfit. Uh, Sasha seems definitely more the heel in this match. She definitely was talking a lot of trash, basically telling her, you know, what I'm saying you're supposed to be the EST. Stop it. I'm the best when it comes to this. I, I run this division, which she really does, let's be honest with you. Um, Bianca and Belair definitely showed her strength throughout this match. She's hella strong. I like the the spot where she's basically doing like, you know, holding Bianca Belair in the air upside down. And she'll like kind of drop halfway and then muster up the strength to carry her back up straight up. Then she'll drop halfway again. Carry her back up straight up. I thought that was pretty cool. She's very strong. Um, they were definitely putting on a decent match for me. You know what I'm saying? I was I was still, you know, enjoying myself. I was I expecting a little bit more. Yes, but at the same time, I felt like the crowd had kind of been burnt out with just what was going on. I think there was a lot. There was too many matches on this card that were unnecessary. Me personally. But that's neither here nor there. Um... Sasha using Bianca's hair in the bank statement. I thought that was very effective. Looked very brutal. Sasha kicking out of the 450 splash. Bianca losing her shit. Like, how the hell she kick out? Because it's fucking Sasha Banks. That's how. Um, I want to say uh, Bianca was finally able to hit her finishing move. And she ends up winning the match. Here's what makes this moment kind of tainted. Because I don't think Michael Cole was looking at the same thing everyone else was. So when Bianca's going for the pin, the one, two, the three, and they ring the bell for the match to be over, Michael Cole in excitement calls out, Sasha kicked out. Sasha kicked out. And the match was over, and Bianca's hold, getting the championship. And it's like, no, bro. She didn't kick out. She lost. And it's, I don't know what the hell is Cole looking at. They even showed a replay. So I said, didn't even attempt to kick out. I was just like, Cole, what are you, why are you getting so excited? What the hell was that, Cole? Come on, bro. That was funny to me. That, to me, that last segment of what Cole saw and that mess up, that botch, that is the definition to me of night one. It was, it was exciting, but there was like, it was, it was, it was filled. I wouldn't say the show was filled with botches, but it was just like it was exciting. But at the same time, it was like I think it's more exciting because there's fans there. I think that's what made this wrestle night one just a little bit more special and a little bit more enjoyable because fans were there. If there was no fans there and it was just at the Thunderdome, this shit would have been boring. It would have been a lot more boring. I'm not even gonna lie to you, but because fans was there. There were some decent matches here. It was more of a, meh, all right, cool. But I do expect night two to be better. I'm willing to bet my bottom dollar night two will be a whole lot better, and I'm looking forward to that. So comment down below. Let me know if you guys enjoyed night one. Me, personally, like I've been saying throughout this review, it was meh. It could have been better. I was expecting a little bit better, but overall, it was it was it was okay. It was okay. Tonight one was okay at best, and it's only okay because the crowd being there at WrestleMania made it that much better. So comment down below. Let me know what you thought about night one and what was your favorite match from night one. 
even though this main event was cool i i think i enjoyed surprisingly uh well not even surprisingly i enjoyed drew versus bobby lashley only because it it, it just it started off the show very very well you know what i'm saying it was a it was a high impact type match and you know what i'm saying I, I i just i for me personally i enjoyed that match more than all the other matches for tonight me personally and the surprise enjoying enjoyable match was the bad bunny match that was a surprisingly enjoyable than more than i expected so comment down below let me know what was your favorite match appreciate all the love and support road to 40k appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace